Hi everyone. Now, over the years I've tied countless numbers of comparadons. It's a great fly. It uh, catches lots of fish in many places around the world, in, even here in the UK and Scotland. Uh, it's a great style. Now this one here uh, is my first go with Sika. Now I have used in the past deer hair t t lots of types. The main comparison here would be say comp uh, would be coastal deer hair would be the first uh, decent piece that I ever used. It's got a nice fine black tip. Uh, I've used lots of other fat, uh, as I say from then. We even used elk hair, uh, which is really good. Uh, but it just depends on what you're looking for, and depend again what size you're going to be tying the comparison. Uh, the coastal deer is very fine. It's much smaller. It's very good for small comparisons. Uh, I th I'm even sure this will tie right down uh, now. The hair I'm using is Sika. This is it here. Um, it's well marked, it's got a lovely colour, it's a nice colour of grey, which obviously suits wings uh, of many flies. Uh, it's got a nice short black tip, which makes a big difference when you want to basically stack it to get a nice colour uh, and get a length you, you, uh, to suit the fly you're tying. Uh, uh, the other reason for using it would be obviously the strength, it's got to be strong and, uh, and last and float is another thing. So this piece is uh, like ideal, uh, it's, it's a really good wee piece. Now I really liked it once I tried it. Now I have tied a couple of patterns, I've tied it a couple of ways. Oh, no, sorry, this one, this one here. Uh, this is just basically a good March Brown type. But this is a, what they call basically a standard like fan wing that's quite thin. Uh, it's sometimes people like it like that, whereas in this one, if you look at it in the wing, it's a bit more. It's, I actually wind through the the the, the seeker to open it, and it gives you a bit of thicker and wider. So there's different ways of actually tying it. And I actually prefer this style, so I do the the, th the wider wing. I like to wind a wee bit of dubbing through it. So anyway, we're going to be tying it. They basically. There's this motor, there's a lot of materials you could use, a lot of colours, obviously. I'm going to stick with I've actually I've been using this is the, the ultra dry dub uh, from Full and Mill. So I've been putting some flies together using the, the new dubbing from Full and Mill. Uh, I do, this is the, they've got the ultra dry yarn. Now the ultra dry yarn has been blended through the dubbing, so it makes it flow, it makes a, a different dubbing. It's a wee bit coarser than the, the average dubbing, like uh, the dry fly dubbing. It's slightly different, so that's why I like it as well. It gives me a, another option. Hook choice, it's up to yourself. I like tying comparisons on a wide gate hook. Uh, and this is what they call the short shank special. Again, it's a full and mill. Or if you if you don't get the if you can't get the full and mill, then use the Camasan do a short shank. Uh, they do a, it's a B one sixty. So B one sixty is a good hook as well. They're, they're, they're very they're, they're similar. They're just the same looking, uh, and I find them exactly the same. I do like the Fuller Mill, they do a black nickel version. Uh, this is just a normal colour, it's a bronze coloured hook. Uh, but Fuller Mill do the black nickel, which is uh, one of my favourite uh, sort of hooks to use. But anyway, we're going to tie just to show you what the seeker's like. This is a well, you could use a lot of colours. Uh, in this colour, uh, I'm using a tan colour through uh, dubbing. So, you could use a rusty brown, you could use, I mean, I've, to, I've got, just change it, because I've got this one I tied with, with the, 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 the rusty, the rusty brown, I'm going to tie one with yellow, because this colour combination, is with the tan coloured uh, dubbing, would be ideal for uh, early season uh, duns coming off, or even March browns, so it'd be a great fly for that. So anyway, what we're going to do is we start at the, the eye of the hook, and I usually come halfway down, or to basically in line with the point of the hook in this style, then I come halfway back up, and that gives me a position for the wing. It's important that you watch the thread, you need the grip. Now, again, when you're using a new hair, you need to sort of, you, you'll know how much to use to suit the fly, so it's a kind of guesstimate. They're all round about the same, but as, as I say, when you're using a new hair, you're always going to sort of mess about to get the, the amount you really like. Now the first thing you've got to do is 
obviously trim away from the skin, open out the fibre and remove the under fur or any broken ends and then you want to stack it so into a small stacker, tips first and you stack onto your desk, just tap away just make sure that it's stacked now I'm going to show you you see the black here, this fine black tip, it's absolutely perfect now, I just take it out anyway, but it makes sense to actually take it out the way you're going to tie it in. So I'm going to tie it in forward of the eye. So take it with my case my left hand. So I don't need to keep swapping the wing over. And then I can get it so they obviously don't so upset the, the stacking. Uh, you want to be able to hold it without doing that. Now, length. Best thing to do is measure the, the eye to go shank length or a decent wing on it or you have a hook length, it's up to yourself it's like an in between for me so that what I do is then on the top, that you, again make sure you wax got plenty of grip, you come over with a couple of, sort of turns now I'm just going to make sure the deer hair is on the top and then tighten up and three or four more turns keep a hold of the waist ends, don't let them go Got a lot of the ends here are missed. Now what I like to do, you know, most people you could trim away. You want your way down and trim. But what I like to do is break it off. So I start to work down and then slowly tear it. Eventually it goes. Uh, you don't need to do it this way, it's just the way I like. And then you get that nice cut just at that point. You have to have a lot of well, obviously make sure your thread's waxed and you've got plenty of grip. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. Now for the tail, I'm just going to use some white and cock de Leon. This is a medium pardo. These are just, this is from a saddle I'm using. So you just bring the fibres 90 degrees out from the stem of the feather. The tips should naturally line up. And then tear them off. The length of the tail again, it's up to yourself. It's on average you're looking at least the hook length, so I put that in my final thumb. There's a measure. You can trim this away so you don't need to trim. And then you can catch it on. Come down. I usually work my way down. This point here, just as it starts to come round the bend, then I come underneath with a turn. The underneath the Cock the Leon and then pull towards the eye, lifting out and spreading the fibres, just lifting them up. And then you do a turn on top and that locks them. And that gives you that. I'm just going to lift this hook up a wee bit. Nice and tight and see what it's like. This looks fine. Now, if I want to rib it, one of the easiest ways to do it, you, could, you can run up. Just form a wee dubbing loop, come back down. I usually like to stop about, say, a mill or so from the back, because I like the wee yellow tag. So you've doubled this up. This is going to be your rib. I usually wax it so it gives it grip. Now, as I say, I'm using this dub in here. This is Ultra Dry Dub and Tan. It's a, it's a nice blend. It's got natural fibre in it as well. As I don't know what the blend is like, but if I'm looking at it, I can see it looks like some natural fibre as well as the... Uh, the ultra yarn. So we just lightly dab it on. And slide it up. So we want some sort of taper. I like to see the yellow a wee bit coming through. It may work our way up. Just tighten when we need to. It will naturally get heavier because you've got a t you've got that the waist of the, the seeker there with the tapered cut. Yeah, I'm just going to get my, my hook for some reason wants to sit down. There we are. Now what I'm going to do is lift up these fibres. I'm going to half them. So basically half them so I can get dubbing through it. Uh, and then, then I'll get the dubbing through. Now the, the rib, if you want to rib it, you can rib it just now. Or you can rib it after you do that. But 
you know what, I'll rub it, I'll do it just now, it's best to do it right up against the wing, catch it in. I usually as I say, I, I'll, I'll leave it and then keep continue down and keeping it there, so we've got about half a wing, come through with two or three turns of the dubbing. So there's my, my ribs still there, there's the forward or the front part of the wing. I'm just taking my time. It looks a bit fiddly but it's not really, it's just... It makes sense just to tie it in while you're going up. Before I put on the front dubbing, I'm just going to trim away my rib. This point I like to make sure the deer hair spread. It's got a nice fan like shape because you're basically using the dubbing to hold it up. You could finish off at that or you could just build up a bit of dubbing at the front, which I like to do. Uh, just a nice head area. It suits. I like the comparison like that. And then what we want to do is we've got a varnish on my thread. I especially do this when I've got a dubbed head. I'll put varnish on my thread and then whip finish. It gets right into your and it lasts far longer. Any wee fibres are long, just trim them away. Just lift up the ring. See what it's like. And then underneath I like to just trim through. A nice flat shape. I leave the top of the, the body. And there we are. And that's the compare done with the, the Seco wing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and give it a go and if you get a hold of this material it's certainly worth tying uh, the comparison with it so thanks for watching